As we speak about this issue right now, at least six Amazon employees have died thanks to the tornadoes in Illinois. Uh, that tornado uh, not only ripped through the state, but it also uh, led to the collapse of an Amazon warehouse. And uh, the death toll could increase uh, in the coming days. Now, Amazon has been slowly reinstating its long standing policy of banning mobile phones in its warehouses after easing the prohibition amidst the COVID 19 pandemic. As such, Amazon's warehouse workers may be required to leave their phones in lockers as well as clear metal detectors. That is the issue that's now coming up as a result of what happened at this Amazon warehouse because workers are saying, listen, we need access to our phones if there's an emergency. If we need information about upcoming storms, it's better to have our phones on us. And so if you look at this image, you'll see what the Amazon warehouse looked like before and after the tornado ripped through it. So you can see how the roof of the building had collapsed, which again led to the deaths of six Amazon workers. Amazon workers, by the way, have also pointed out the company's anti-phone policy cuts them off from important information such as weather safety warnings. Further, their lack of phones means that workers may be unable to quickly contact emergency services or their loved ones in the event of a disaster, particularly if they're trapped in rubble. And as we know, Amazon is so obsessed with productivity and speed. They want to ensure that they get packages delivered as quickly as possible. And so as a result, they control everything that their workers do, including whether or not they can have their own cell phones on them as they're working. Yeah, so again, this is a situation where you need strong leadership in government and we are very, very unlikely to get it. The Republicans do not want to regulate a big business because they get campaign donations from them. The Democrats, on the other hand, do not want to regulate big business because they get campaign donations from them. Exactly, okay. exactly. So, in, so on social issues, there are big differences between Republicans and Democrats. On economic issues like this and corruption issues like this, there's almost no difference at all. And so if I was president, and, and I say that so to give you a contrast to what the softness and the weakness that we have now. Um, what I would say is, look, we don't yet know all the facts and they should do a real investigation here. It's possible, for example, that the managers on the site really genuinely thought that they would be safer inside of the bunker inside these factories right, rather than the, on the roads. Because the factory remained, the warehouse remained open in the case of Amazon. And there was a factory that remained open in Kentucky despite the tornado warnings. And so there's, I think, justified backlash as a result of that. And in both instances, you have the executives, both for Amazon and for the candle factory in Kentucky arguing, no, 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 it was much safer for them to stay at work and to remain in the you know bunker or the shelter provided for the employees. I'm not really buying that, but. Yeah. That is that's unlikely, and people died in those factories, and and uh, there were reports of, a, uh, for example, a girlfriend who was texting with uh, her partner, and he they had a 16 minute warning. She said he could have driven to my house in 13 minutes. We were perfectly fine at my house, and so, but we don't know for sure. So I would be careful about it and say, hey, let's find out all the facts. But we're gonna find out the facts. We're not gonna take Amazon's word for it. We're not gonna take any big business's word for it, right? And if it turns out that you just wanted to make an extra buck, hey, it's holiday season and I need you to keep working through a tornado. Well, then there are going to be criminal consequences, not just civil, but we're gonna come for you. We're gonna arrest you and put you in jail because those people are dead. Now that's under a just society. That's not actually gonna happen. Oh, uh, in with, America, there's yeah. a 0% chance that will happen under a Republican or Democratic administration. They're more likely to give funding to Amazon for, oh, we could build a better bunker. Maybe they could work in the bunker while the tornado's above them, you know? I wouldn't that's, be surprised. That's more likely. They'll do subsidies and tax credits. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And 
I wanna give you the details about the uh, woman who's come forward to talk to the press about her you know, boyfriend working in the warehouse and the communication that they had as this tornado was ripping through the state. So Larry Verdon is the name of the Amazon warehouse worker. He started working at Amazon five months ago. Um, he was among the six employees who died in the destruction. His girlfriend, Cherie Jones, said that she was texting him shortly before the incident. Verdon had texted her 16 minutes before the tornado was was said to have touched down, leaving him enough time to have gone back to their house nearby Collinsville, which she said was a 13 minute drive away. And then she says this, we heard the tornado didn't touch down until 8.39 PM, so we had 20 minutes to get home. But you know, the question that I have, I don't know the specific details on this. I know that there's some warning that there's a tornado coming. I wanna know just how how far in advance do the executives and, and employers know that there's a tornado coming? And if there's enough time to shut down operations temporarily so people can go home and be safe, why didn't they do that? But I, I doubt that that investigation is even gonna happen. Yeah, that's the most important part, Anna, because um, look, uh, the people who died, it ranged from age of 26 to 62. And one of the stories was of this young guy who worked at the factory. His dad also worked there at the warehouse. And so they get a message that oh, they're gonna bunker down at, at the warehouse. And they're really worried about it, the parents are. So they start driving towards the warehouse because they're so scared for what's gonna happen to their son. And they get there and it's already collapsed. And they wait and wait and wait, and then around 4.30 AM, somebody comes out and says, "Oh, by the way, I should tell you, the dad also worked at the warehouse. And on Wednesdays, he used to work together with his son, which was a really wonderful moment for the family. They worked together there. And at 4.30 AM, they come out and tell him, no, your, your boy has passed. He's one of the ones that died. Now, we live in a brutal country um, that is under corporate rule. And corporations are never held accountable. And they're considered human beings with all of the constitutional rights. And then you have extra rights like limited liability and other tangible rights that they have that are greater than a human being's rights. This was invented by the Supreme Court, which has been brutal from the 1970s to now and is totally a wing of corporate rule, a very important wing of corporate rule. Especially and now. Yes, and guys, you should know this, and this is very important. There are two Supreme Court justices that got on the court now because they said corporations can kill people and get away with it. Kavanaugh said was the only ju judge in this particular case as it went through the different levels. They said, "Oh, in SeaWorld, one of the killer whales killed one of the employees," and he said, "Oh, who cares? Yeah, of course, no liability. The employee should have known." And that's his problem, not the company's problem. Gorsuch was worse. Yes. There was a freezing truck driver. His truck is damaged. He's got to get it off the road because he's literally freezing to death. And he calls it in, and the company says, No, sit there and freeze to death. It's against company rules. He doesn't, thank God. He drives the truck in. Gorsuch, at every level, every judge disagreed except Gorsuch. He said, If the company orders you to freeze to death, you should freeze to death. No, you will get no, if they fire you, stay fired. They told you to die and you didn't die, it's your fault. And Trump saw that, but it wasn't just Trump, it was the entire Republican Party. And they moved him up the ranks. They're like, oh, he's willing to kill in favor of corporations. The Federalist Society. That's our boy. Yep. The Federalist Society picks those judges for the right wing and for the Republican Party. And when they see that, they don't see that as a negative. They see it as a huge positive. This guy will do anything for corporate rule. And so that's how Gorsuch made it to the Supreme Court. So you will have no recourse in the courts here, okay? And our politicians are bought by Amazon and every other corporation, including the Democrats. So they'll do absolutely nothing for you. From now on, all the people of Kentucky, Illinois, and every other place that the, the tornado is affected, where the companies told the workers to go back to work, you know, you might get compensation from the government because that's easy. But you'll get no justice from those companies because our government doesn't look out for you. It's, it's just another wing of corporate rule that's meant to oppress you.
Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.